Hi there, R. Hendy coming to you once again from the uh, geocaching workshop in Stockton Springs, Maine. Uh, what we've got today um, is really not a geocache. Although I do have uh, one of these out in one of my geocaches in the Penobscot Bay series. This uh, represents my efforts at recreating something that I saw on the internet. Okay, so let's talk about this first box. This is the one that I saw on the internet, and it's a pretty classic puzzle box. But let's talk about building the box in general first. You probably have seen a box that looks like this before here and there. It does different things. Um, sort of a classic design. I actually ripped down each of these little planks, these little boards myself, and glued them all together. Uh, you can probably take a piece of wood and cut slots in these and, and have one single piece of wood, but I preferred to make it exactly what it looks like it is, is uh, different sticks that kind of go around the box and they're all glued together. So it took me quite a while to uh, cut all these and glue and clamp all the connections. So the user looks at this and looks for something to open it with and as you can see there's nothing outwardly on the outside. You can hear something inside, but there's nothing that gives away the clue as to what you do to get this thing open. Nothing moves. But eventually, what you, if you're really sharp or you've seen one of these things before, you find out that if you take and grip crossways, see this guy right here, this white one, and this black one down here? What the user does is he grips from here to here and pulls on the diagonal against those two and the drawer comes out. Show that again. If it's in there, there's nothing you can do to pull these out. You can't pull out one by itself. But when you grip crossways across both of them and you pull, the door comes out. Okay, so here's the second one. Uh, and you look at it and you say, well, Bob, that's, that's the same as the last one. Looks absolutely identical. And again, you push and tug on anything to see if anything opens, and nothing presents itself except if you kind of look around the edge here, you can see that, well, maybe that top comes off. You can see a seam that goes all the way around. Maybe that seam, unlike these other seams, is, is, is a seam that, that I can pull the top off. And if you pull on it, you can see you do get a little motion. You get just a little bit of motion to give you the clue that, yeah, that's where I'm going. But how do I get that to open? Because it just seems to be locked no matter what I do. You can tip it. And that doesn't help. You tip it this way and that doesn't help. Any way you tip it, it doesn't seem to help. I'm going to do something to let you watch and you figure out why in just a second. But this is what we do. In my case, I just kind of rattle it back and forth this way. The lid comes off. The secret to this lid is that these slots here engage some pins that hold the lid closed. And let's look at those pins. Here's three on this side, and here's three on this side. Okay? And no matter which way you turn it, some of those pins are always going to be out. And the only way you can get all those pins to go back in is to, well, in the case of what they did on the internet, was you spin it. And when you spin it, as you can see, all the pins go back in. In my case, I can just shake this and get the same effect. And then to put it back together and close it, put the lid back on, give it a little shake like that, and guess what? It is latched to beat the band. That came off the internet. Call that one number two. Let's take a look at number three. Well, guess what? Here's number three. Looks the same, doesn't it? Same darn box. Bob, that's the same box. Well, no, it's a little different. This one doesn't have any seam around the top. Okay. And as a matter of fact, you probably don't know what the top from the bottom is. I happen to know. I'm going to put a tag on here that, uh, because this becomes a jewelry box for my, one of my daughters. Uh, but this is the top. And in this case, there's a drawer that comes out, just like the other one that were gripped like this. 
Uh, but this drawer, you can see there's a little bit of push, but it doesn't come out. In my case, this is, this is my invention, at least it's my invention as far as I know. I don't know that I've ever seen anyone else that's come up with this. What we do is we turn it upside down, and when we press this drawer, listen. We can pull that drawer out, while well, we can see it's upside down. So let's turn it right side up, and we see that what we've got is the drawer and the contents of the drawer with a little slide there to pull the contents in while it's being turned upside down and twisted all around. And the secret to this is the little latch mechanism inside, which is a gravity latch. The wire goes this way when it's right side up, and when you turn it upside down, that wire falls out of place and clears the catch that's on the back of this drawer. Okay, And then when you turn it right side up again, that wire falls back into place, ready to engage that catch again. So, simply to close it, just push the drawer right in again. Listen. Hear that? It's locked. Piece of cake, huh? That's puzzle box number three. Although you couldn't tell it uh, without messing with it. Looks like the others, doesn't it? So that's the Puzzle Box Trio. Maybe you can make one yourself. Good luck. See you next time.